Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, we're here on a landfill site in Poland to ask how rubbish dumps can reduce their methane emissions. Generally, most landfill sites really don't care how the organic element is stored, so it's a serious problem and it needs to be addressed. First, let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which shows that, on a global scale, temperatures in September were 0.3 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. And that makes it the joint fourth warmest September on record. Now, on this graphic, you can see in blue that much of Europe, Russia and Siberia were actually cooler than average last month. It was also cooler across Australia, southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay and northern Argentina. And then if we zoom in, you can see that huge area of dark red across Greenland where temperatures were over 8 degrees Celsius above average last month. Glaciologist Jason Box was in Greenland in September and he says it was due to unusually warm weather from the south. Normally in September, the melt season is drawing to a close. And because of this persistent circulation drawing air from the south, you had temperatures that were well above melting, peaking even 10 Celsius above melting. So it was raining instead of snowing. And then Hurricane Fiona brought some extra heat and moisture to Greenland in the end of September. Now to our report on efforts to reduce methane emissions from household waste. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas, 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. So cutting methane is part of the solution to slow global warming. I went to a waste disposal plant in southern Poland to see how it's done. This landfill site near Krakow collects hundreds of tonnes of household waste every day. Waste which will produce methane if it's just left to decompose. So after sorting, it's composted in the presence of a good flow of oxygen. A first step to stem the emission of methane, as manager Adam Krolikowski explains. This composting process doesn't produce methane because it's an aerobic process. So here, the composting bioreactor has pipes in the floor that aerate the material for us. This speeds up the composting process. The waste is eventually compacted and covered in earth. It continues to produce methane, though, so the operators extract the gas and use it for power. Here we have a system for active gas extraction, and the methane is actually extracted out of the landfill under pressure. There's a negative pressure or vacuum in these pipes that brings the biogas into a bioelectric plant where electricity is produced. Methane is lighter than air and it continues to escape despite the vacuum pumps. So Marcin Kalemka works to detect the gas plumes. We have detected a small leak, but it is quite small. Now we need to mark it on the maps and pass this information to the landfill managers so that they can take corrective action. In the EU, a quarter of man-made methane emissions come from waste. Capturing the methane makes sense on many levels, according to scientist Yaroslav Neki. This is definitely a quicker measure than reducing carbon emissions. Reducing methane emissions seems easy, if only because it brings a clear financial benefit to the companies involved too. Therefore, it's profitable not only for climate reasons, but also for financial reasons. Of course, reducing methane emissions from waste is just one part of the huge greenhouse gas reduction task ahead of us. And you can read more about it on euronews.com slash climate now. I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.